We've all seen Hank just running down the road. He's sunburnt, he's wrinkly, his skin looks leathery, and he just keeps running. He just keeps running. The scary thing, he's only 33. Listen, there's this thing out there right now that's saying that running ages people faster. Okay, and I want to break down what is commonly said and sort of the, I don't know, the speculation there. And I'm not necessarily saying it's right or wrong, but let's address it because there maybe there's some ways that you can combat it. Cardio, yes, it's good for you, obviously. We know cardiovascular work is tremendous for a heart, tremendous for lots of different metabolic functions. But does too much, like going for runs a lot and doing a lot of endurance work, does it actually make you potentially age faster? Okay, we're going to break it all down and we're going to look at predominantly two pathways. Okay? One pathway is going to be the amount of oxidative damage that occurs as a result of that. And the other piece is going to be the nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide piece, that whole cycle of how we create energy and cellular respiration. So let's break it down. And after this video, whether you're an endurance runner, whether you're a strength athlete or whatever you are, you want to check out Thrive Market because we all have to eat. So Thrive Market is an awesome sponsor of this channel and they are an online membership based grocery store. So whether you are fasting, whether you are doing keto, paleo, vegan, they have everything for you. So you log on, you sort by different diet type, you go shopping, it gets delivered right to your doorstep in a couple of days. It is so easy. And a lot of times you end up saving money because you don't have to go to the grocery store and you find really good deals there. So they're a big supporter of this channel. And as a result, that link down below saves you 25% off your first order along with a free gift. But you gotta be using that link that's down below in the description. So check them out after this video and big thank you to Thrive Market for the continued support. Okay, let's cover the first basic one. When we exercise, we create a lot of oxidative stress. Yeah, okay, it's called reactive oxygen species and it's simply a result of cellular respiration. It's simply a result of moving our bodies and inflicting stress upon ourselves. So in that theory, the harder that we work, the more stress that we cause upon our body and the faster we potentially age. Um, okay, I can see where people could think that, but I wanna just poke holes in that one first. There is a thing called a hormetic stressor. When we train hard, when we work out hard, when we run hard, we also upregulate the ability to deal with oxidative stress, okay? Now, there is always going to be a line of diminishing return, okay? So what that means is, like, if I went out for a six-mile run and I pushed myself, okay, and I pushed that hormesis just a little bit to where I developed the ability to deal with that stressor, then at rest, my baseline ability to deal with stressors would hypothetically be better. Or I shouldn't even say hypothetically, I think it's pretty well demonstrated in a lot of cases, okay? But there is a certain point where if I were to go and I were to keep on damaging my body and never recover and keep going and keep going and keep going, then yes, eventually that hormetic curve curves so much that you no longer get a benefit because you're not just barely adapting to that workout, you're obliterating yourself. And that can happen with anything. I think what I want to address first is the psychosomatic piece and the psychology, and I'll touch on this for just a moment. As a runner myself, and as someone that grew up long distance running and marathon running at a very young age, prior to when I was 300 pounds, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna to touch on that for a second. The reason I ended up 300 pounds is because I blew out my knees running so much. I ran my first marathon when I was 11. I digress. Point is, is that mentality of most cardio people and runners is to run themselves into the ground. Okay, that's just a lot of mentality. Like, they will run no matter what. You've seen the guy that's running like this, but he's going like 20 miles like that. They just do it anyway. So yes, in that case, I could probably agree that you're probably aging yourself, okay? But let's touch on the piece that I think is more important, okay? That is the nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide piece. There are arguments, I've seen them out there on Reddit, I've seen them out there before, that because exercise depletes your NAD, you're going to age faster. Now, a quick recap on what that is. Okay. NAD is nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide. Okay. NAD is an electron carrier. It is so important for energy. So important to the point that if we didn't have NAD, we'd be dead within like 15 to 30 seconds. It is required by every cell in the body. What it does is it carries electrons from our food, from our fuel, from everything, whatever, carries it into a cell, carries it into the mitochondria so that we can ultimately create energy. Okay. That electron is very important, right? Well, as we move more, our demand for NAD is more, okay? Now, what happens is when we have more NAD available, as in 
NAD that's not being used for energy or for, for movement or cellular energy at that point in time. The leftover NAD, let's call it leftover, the spare NAD goes and it activates these things called sirtuins, mainly SIRT1. These are largely associated with longevity. Okay, largely associated with FOXO3, largely associated with CD36. And okay, there's a lot of interesting things there that when we have more NAD available, we have potentially even anti-aging or longevity benefits there. And there's a lot of research by Dr. David Sinclair and a lot of other people in that category. I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole, I just wanted to explain a point there. So the theory is that when you exercise and run so much, you are depleting NAD so much that you are making less NAD available to activate sirtuins. You're never allowing yourself a chance to actually activate those. I completely can understand where that comes from, but there's another important piece we have to look at there, okay? It is called NAMPT, okay? So NAMPT stands for nicotinamide phosphoribosyl transferase, and it is part of what is called the NAD salvage system. In a healthy human being, or most mammals, we have the ability to take components of NAD that have been used already, recycle them into niacinamide, NAM, and through the salvage pathway, convert it back to NMN and back into NAD once again. Okay, but it is required upon that cycle, that whole cycle needs this NAMPT. Okay, it is the rate limiting step. And when we exercise, we potentially improve our levels of NAMPT. So that means, in theory, if we can improve our NAMPT, we improve our efficiency at recycling NAD. You see, if we could not recycle NAD, then I would agree completely. I, if we could, if we did not have a salvage pathway, if we did not have the ability to recycle nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide, then that argument would be very sound. That running or exercising to a crazy degree or even just a moderate degree would actually age us faster because we'd deplete the NAD and we'd only be able to restore NAD from vitamin B3, from NMN, from NR, from various foods that contain, you know. Yes, we would have limited resources, but our body has the ability to recycle NAD and we can improve our ability to recycle NAD by guess what? Exercising, okay? So by exercising, we actually improve our ability to create NAD and improve the NAD to NADH ratio, thereby having more NAD available to activate sirtuins potentially, or at least keeping us even, okay? So I guess the other side of the equation is if you are someone that out of the blue at age 60 decides that you wanna start being a marathon runner, then yes, there could be some degree of like stress that occurs that could be difficult to combat. But if you're someone that's been running for a lifetime, probably a little less so. But the other piece that we have to remember too is that NAD is not just about energy. Okay, there's something called NAD phosphate or nicotinamide adenide dinucleotide phosphate, NAD phosphate. This acts as something that kind of modulates the reactive oxygen species that comes as a result of exercise. So there are a lot of different factors because NAD is also a signaling molecule. So when we exercise, NAD gets, in some ways gets depleted, but it's also a signaling molecule that is signaling the upregulation of other processes that help support that salvage pathway. So does it actually age you? But let's just put this in a nutshell. Running will age you if you did not, for whatever reason, have a efficient NAMPT effect on the salvage pathway, okay? But that doesn't mean anything to you. Running would probably impact you if you were literally running too much, okay? One of the ways that you can look at that is simply look at your heart rate variability, okay? I wear an aura ring, not a plug, just saying it. That's how I look at my recovery, right? That can tell us a lot. That's factoring in other things, okay? Another thing that you can do, believe it or not, is space your meals out a little bit more, okay? So that you have a chance for NAD to actually rebuild and you're not constantly depleting it by, aid, by, uh, by eating, right? It, every time you eat, your body has to take that fuel and it has to take NAD bind to an electron, create NADH, decreasing the NAD to NADH ratio, thereby having less NAD affecting sirtuins, right? So one of the issues that I see with runners and endurance athletes is how much they eat throughout the course of the day. They are generally snackers. A lot of times they are. 
okay, they're usually consuming a lot of carbohydrates because that was kind of how the endurance game was for a long time. Now it's moving more towards, uh, you know, keto and fasting and things like that, but it really was a lot of carbohydrates. I'm not saying carbohydrates are bad, but they require more NAD, okay? Ketones do not require NAD. So when you are fasting and you're not requiring that same glucose, it's different, you're not depleting NAD as much. So things that you can do to not have the aging effect, don't overrun, <laughs> limit the carbohydrate consumption, try to run in a little bit more of a fasted state so you're actually improving that ratio a little bit more, okay? And also just flat out think about the overall stress in your body and your recovery. That's gonna play an even bigger role. So I don't think it's triggering this aging effect that people are saying. And I guess you'll ask me, I do have some wrinkles on my forehead, but whatever, I'll see you tomorrow.